And how do I network without becoming completely exhausted? Even if socializing with others makes you uneasy, there are ways to network without feeling uncomfortable or burnt out. Friends, I'm Ashley Stahl, career coach, keynote speaker, host of the Top 100 Show, the U-Turn podcast, and author of the best-selling book also named U-Turn. Get unstuck, discover your direction, and design your dream career. So it's no secret that for me, networking is really important and also for you. In fact, some estimate that approximately 85% of jobs are filled through networking. That means only around 15% of jobs come from job boards like Indeed.com. I mean, I think that's pretty crazy. And yet, it makes sense. Hiring isn't convenient or easy. That's why companies even bonus their employees to recommend someone as a new hire, sparing them all the paperwork and logistics of hiring someone and finding a fit for their newest job opening. Although networking might be easy for some, the same is certainly not true for everyone. When you walk into a networking situation, do you strut into the room and chat with anyone you can find? Or do you sit in the corner and wait for people to walk up to you? A lot of this boils down to how you get energy. So, would you describe yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? To me, being an introvert simply means you recharge your batteries best by being completely alone. Extroverts, on the other hand, tend to get energy by being around people. According to research from YouGov, 44% of Americans describe themselves as introverts. It's a pretty big chunk of the population. So, without further ado, here are three networking hacks for introverts. Number one, ask for warm introductions. Whenever we think about networking, many of us picture a big trade show crowded with people in conference halls, and even to the average person that probably sounds pretty overwhelming. But networking doesn't always have to mean crowded rooms and walking up to as many people as possible. No need to spray and pray with your business card, because sometimes one connection can lead to many. Cold introductions can be scary, but if you're an introvert, warm introductions may be the way to go. Reach out to people you're really already comfortable with and ask them if they know of anyone who they think might be a good connection for you. Most likely, they'll have one or more people they're willing to introduce you to. Then you can meet with them individually, which is a lot less intimidating than those massive networking events that sometimes can reek of wine, still cheese, and just way too much social stimulation. Then, if the first meeting goes well, you can even consider also asking that person if they know anyone who might be a good connection for you. So there's another warm introduction right there. Long story short, it's a lot less pressure to network with individuals than groups of people if you're an introvert. Focus on ways to network with individuals through warm introductions. Personal conversations are the best way to connect with others after all. This strategy just requires you to be proactive about your networking, asking for those intros, versus waiting for people to come to you in a large room or networking event. Number two, be prepared. When you know you're going into a networking situation, please don't go in unprepared. This means preparing your elevator pitch, something we talk about a lot in my Job Offer Academy course and even on this YouTube channel. For certain events, there may be a list of attendees. Look at who's on the list and see who would be the most helpful person to speak to. This might sound a little creepy, but you should look them up on LinkedIn and get intentional about the event. It might feel a little stalkerish, but then you know exactly who you walk up to. When you're speaking to someone for the first time, it's important to have a general framework of what you're going to say. And having that elevator pitch I mentioned creates an air of confidence and professionalism. And if you don't end up hopping into one of my courses like the Job Offer Academy or the Career Clarity Lab, know that we have a free YouTube video about elevator pitches. In short, your elevator pitch is about creating a few straightforward sentences that tell the person you're talking to about who you are and what you're looking for. It can sound like a lot, but can definitely be summed up in just a few simple sentences. For example, my elevator pitch in my early 20s when I worked in national security in Washington, D.C. was I grew up in a house where the news was always on, so from a young age, I was really exposed to the happenings of the world. My family was on the East Coast. They were really impacted by 9-11, and I think that solidified my interest in government so that I could do something about it. That's my why. That's what inspired me to become fluent in French, and I'm also working to become fluent in Arabic. This is a main skill of mine I highlight. A lot of my professors have told me that I have a great knack for writing, so I'm looking to bring that into an intelligence analysis career right after grad school. This highlights another skill of mine and tells them where I ultimately want to go. 
Notice how I explained why I was in my career. I gave a humble brag about my foreign language capabilities, something relevant for the position I was speaking, and I highlighted a main skill of mine, then talking about what kind of job I was seeking. Now, your elevator pitch in the process of creating one has a lot of depth. I talk a lot about it in my book, but this general framework can get you started and it's worked wonders for my career. Just be sure to practice, practice, practice. Afterward, it's great to just talk to the person naturally and put some conversation starters and questions into your back pocket ahead of time just in case the conversation starts to taper off. Number three is to recharge. If you're an introvert, you get your energy from being alone, so you should be sure to give your mind what it needs to keep going. Just like athletes need time to recover and keep their energy up, so do you. As a busy entrepreneur, this is something that I regularly need to do. In fact, people think I'm an extrovert due to the nature of my work, flying around the world, giving speeches, but I'm actually quite introverted as well. I need to be alone to get my energy back, which is why I take plenty of breaks and take care of myself. That is what allows me to be here and support you. Find out what nourishes you if you don't already know. Perhaps make a list. For you, it might be a relaxing bubble bath or some meditation. Whatever fills you up and contributes to a healthy mind is the way to go. And know that if you don't feel up for an event or it makes you too uncomfortable, it's okay to decline. Although we should power through our fears, we're not usually obligated to attend any networking event. Know what networking events work for you. Yeah, it could be that crowded conference room, but it could also be just chatting with someone in the elevator or having a good conversation with someone over coffee. Networking just means creating a human connection no matter how it's done. So if you're stuck in a huge gathering that feels overwhelming, remember it's about quality over quantity. Set the intention to connect with a couple of kindred spirits at that event that you resonate with. Go deep instead of wide. Think about how you can help them, not how they can help you. While it's important to know who you're talking to, trust in any given moment that you're speaking to the right person, get present, and create depth. In my book U-Turn, I share about how I was talking for a while to a cab driver at a networking event who ended up landing me a meeting in the White House. Just be present, have depth, and from that place I promise your networking attempts will become so much stronger. Always set yourself up for success, but remember, Networking doesn't just mean attending trade events. It's a way of life. It doesn't mean you need to be on all the time. It just means you can consider making yourself available, keeping your eyes up and out of your phone, be it at a grocery store, in a bathroom line, God knows where. Human connection is what we're here for. So connect. Thanks for being here. I would love to hear from you what you thought of this video, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.